Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, we are making these gorgeous, vintage looking, transparent embellishments using images and tea bags. Look, look, how cool does this look? Totally satisfying. We're doing all sorts of fun stuff in this video, including making this junk journal. I'll show you all the things, I discuss all the things, what, when, where, how, everything. So stick around and let's get this party started. But before we get the party started, I just wanted to show you some of the pieces individually. Maybe on some white paper like this, so you can see how they actually look. We have all sorts of stuff. We have little ones like this, big ones like this, more big ones. What else do we have? Some faces you can see here. I love this vintage feel and of course the transparency, that's the main feature. And then there's more and more and it just keeps on going and it's so much fun. All right, let's begin. So the first thing you need to do is choose your images. The most important thing to remember is that your images have to be really, really thin. So I'm using this tissue paper that has this beautiful print on it. You can use tissue paper that comes with your flowers or whatever tissue paper comes in, packages and things like that, especially if it has some sort of a print on it. It doesn't matter if it's crumpled, it doesn't even have to have print on it. Another thing you can use is beautiful, pretty napkins with pretty pictures, like for example, like this, or it doesn't have to have actual pictures. It can just be a generic one like this that you rip out and you can still make it beautiful especially because it's going to be transparent after we're done with it. One thing you cannot really use is, you know, magazine images and things like that. This is way too thick. So when you apply glue onto this, the glue is not going to soak right through. And that's why you need something really, really thin. The next thing you're going to do is isolate your images. If you have images, I mean, this one does have images of roses as well, but when I come to this one, I'm not going to kind of isolate the roses. I don't know, I might do a heart shape, for example. I might do that, we'll see. Okay, so because, you know, I like ripped edges, I'm using my watercolor brush. It's just a wet brush. You can just use your standard brush with a little bit of water and wet around your image and then rip it away from the rest. And there it is, that one's ready to go. Okay, so I have these three images so far. Next, I'm going to use the napkin. So I might just cut out one little section out of this because I'm not going to use the whole thing. All right, there we have it. And now I just need to remove that white layer because I just want to have one fly to work with. Sometimes this white layer comes off really easy. Well, there it is. But if it doesn't, you all probably already know this trick, but if you use a little bit of sticky tape and uh, you know, that, that can help you get started with removing the napkin or the backing. So now I really have my heart set on a heart shape. So I'm just going to draw a heart shape and let's see if that's gonna actually look like a heart. There we go. Maybe I'll do another little one. Maybe it's actually easier to see on this side. There we go. Another little heart. We'll see how that's going to look. And before you ask me where I get my napkins from, I don't have like a special place I go to buy my napkins. Some of them people have sent to me or given me, you know, my mom's given me some napkins. And sometimes I see beautiful napkins in $2 shops and I get them. All right, so what am I going to do here? Let's remove those unnecessary flies. Another thing you can do, for example, actually, let's do one. Why not? So you can use these white pieces as well, or you can use your tissue paper that doesn't have any print on it and stamp on it. I just got whatever stamp was easy to get. And this, this one was easy to get. So I'm just using this script kind of stamp. And because these will get wet, you need a permanent ink, permanent waterproof ink. Protecting my desk. And now I'm just gonna go and stamp directly on top. Wow, look at that. That looks so good. 
that looks better than all the other things I've done. So we will leave that there to dry. And now I'm just going to finish off with these ones. All right, here we go. I ripped into this one a bit too much, but that's okay. It will still look good. And I'm going to leave it at that. Some napkins are just too beautiful to cut into, so I tend to hoard them. And I think I'll be hoarding that one for a little while longer. All right, next thing. You need a slick, non-stick surface. I'm using a cereal box liner. You can use plastic bags. That's probably the best way to go because you can just pick it up and peel it off like this. Whereas if you were using a mat, it might be a little bit more difficult. So just grab yourself a plastic bag or cereal box liner. You also need some glue. What I have here is just plain white glue, PVA glue mixed with water. I want it nice and runny, like runny like that. And that's why I mixed it in with water. So there's about two thirds glue and one third water. All right, pop your glue down. Grab your first image, pop it down on top of the glue. And then I'm gonna use this. Go over it with glue again. Now you can, of course, leave this as it is. And this is the technique of making that rice paper. A faux rice paper video that I did a while ago. You just let it dry and then peel it off. But in this video, I'm using tea bags. I just kind of want to get rid of this straight edge. It's pretty straightforward, really. Most of us use tea bags to dye our paper. After the dyeing process is done, I get rid of all the dried, you know, bits inside, uh, the dried leaves, and that goes into the compost. These bags, they have to go into the rubbish bin. They are not compostable, they are not recyclable because they have small bits of plastic in them. So, not that that really has anything to do with this video, but basically I get rid of the contents and I keep the bags, and depending on what, what tea I use, you can see some are nice and fairly clean, and then you have some that look completely, to some people probably looks dirty, to others it looks wonderful and vintage. So look at this one. But then compare it to this one, you know. So you get all, all sorts of different results depending on what kind of a tea is in there. So what I do is I first let them dry. Everything dries inside for a few days and then I just remove the contents, open the bag up and here we are, okay? People ask often if they go moldy or anything like that. Let's just continue with this. So basically, I grab the bag, pop it right on top of the image, and then I'm just going to pick this glue up again, and then just go over it. People ask, does it go moldy? Probably yes, it will go moldy. If you put your wet tea bags into an, a closed container and leave it there, of course, it's going to go moldy. If you let it completely dry, there's no wetness left it's not going to go moldy. Like these bags have been sitting in here for a very long time, especially these bottom ones. Look how that, oh, look at this. I didn't even know that I have some in there that are not even opened. That's a bonus. So I can show you the process. All right, we'll come back in, to that in a moment. Once I have covered everything with glue, I like to go in and smoosh those edges just like that. It gives that nice vintage kind of look and also it helps me peel the, th the whole thing off later. I'm not being overly gentle or anything here. I'm just kind of pushing it in and, and smushing it down and that's what it looks like. So I don't want to have any bits sitting up like this when it's drying. So I just make sure when I'm kind of pushing in like this, I push it back down. Let's see if I can show you from this level. So I'm pushing it. Oh, it kind of looks disgusting like this, doesn't it? Oh, and then smushing it down, pushing it down so it's nice and level. And there it is. This is how I would leave it to dry. I'll do this one next so, to see how this is going to go. But I just wanted to show you. I'm glad that I actually have two different looking bags in here because all the tea bags are going to look different. Your tea bags might be completely different than the ones that I have here. This is an example of a good tea bag. So I kind of try to get that, get rid of that, you know, string that goes in the bin. I open up the tea bag like this and remove the contents. This is really good for your garden or, you know, your compost bin, whatever. 
your plants even i heard and there we go okay so this is an example of a good tea bag and we'll do something else that's uh, really fun with this all right this is an example of a bad tea bag why because there's nothing much to it all there is to it is this little piece so i kind of have to cut this off here in order to open the bag i open the bag remove the contents and then all i'm left with is this measly tiny little tea bag so you can see the difference between this measly tea bag and this tea bag here so the really good one just in case i don't even know if you can get this where you are but the really good one is twinings and this one is i don't know what this is what is this who knows see what you can do with what you have before you get too disappointed even if you have little tea bags like this you can still use them because you can glue them one on top of the other you can kind of overlap them which is what i did here which is why i have this to show you and here and here so because i had a large image i used three tea bags and you can see the, the slight overlap it's only when you pay attention to it that you can see it otherwise it's not all that visible but when you're looking for it of course you can see the overlap but i think even that looks really nice okay so now i want to do this one rip uh, these edges off pop it down go over it with more glue i think when there's an image of a face something like this then I use the light ones but for something like this I think these dark ones are going to look really good all right look at that I think that's going to look absolutely terrific when it's finished when it's dry and now I'm just going to do the rest next I'm going to do one where I piece a few tea bags together actually I don't have space on on here all right here we go so i'm going to use these lighter ones because i don't want to hide that image underneath and again i'm trying to achieve some uneven edges but they're all kind of ripping evenly so that's fine apply that glue now i'm going to get my next one and lay it on top so i want them to overlap just like that you can do this with just tea bags you don't have to have an image underneath you can make a big piece of paper with just overlapped tea bags that are going to look transparent once they're dried and i'll just grab another one pop it down and look at that it already looks so nice i wasn't planning on you know waiting for this to dry and then showing you the results of the ones that i did in this video because i already have lots of examples to show but i think i'm gonna have to because i want you to see these large pieces how cool they look and by the way this smooshing and stuff it's not necessary it's it just makes your life easier later when you come to peel it off but you don't actually have to do it you can just leave it as it was with nice straight edges i'm going to do the hearts next you can do something like this and piece it together and have one large piece sometimes the tea bags have left over little bits of tea and that also adds to the whole look there's the first one down and there we go I like ancient scrolls <gasps> bit of a broken heart there we shall mend it bit of tea bits in there as well a bit of this and a bit of that you can see those little bits of tea in there that look you know there's quite a lot here that gives it just beautiful texture all right smooshity smoosh huh my tea bags separated here uh it seems like i didn't overlap them so the tea bags are a, a lot more forgiving than the napkins right because they are made to withstand boiling water and not fall apart which is also the reason why they are not recyclable where i am anyway they might be where you live but at the moment they are most definitely non-compostable not recyclable because of the plastic fibers that are contained within them but things change so who knows this is just my latest research has shown that that is the case so when we're using it for projects like this and you need to peel it off it's quite forgiving because it's quite strong 
you know if you try to rip it of course it'll be you can very easily rip it too so it's not you know it's not indestructible all right i'm gonna let this dry and i only have uh two more pieces to do and here we go so i'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and do something with them i just wanted to tell you how i came about this idea so I have some playing cards and as you know playing cards are you know plasticky and shiny and glossy and I was attempting to do something crafty with the cards without having to go to the trouble of sanding them and applying gesso and all that stuff and I do have a video on making cards look vintage without sanding and gesso but I wanted to try a different technique than what I did in that video and so what I did is basically what you've seen me do in this video I popped down a piece of little something an image and another little image onto the card and I did the exact same thing that I did just now in this tutorial but instead of the plastic underneath I was using cards and I thought this is such a fabulous idea I thought this looks really really cool really good and guess what happened the whole thing just peels right off because that's plastic, glossy, shiny, non-stick. And that's how this idea came about because it just peeled off so beautifully. And I thought, oh, well, I really, I really, really like this. From one fail to a success, I reckon, even better than if it actually stayed on the, on the card. And now look at all of these really cool pieces. Look at that. That looks so cool. Look at this one. Alright, this is how I'm currently drying them. Probably not a great idea. It's outside, it's windy, it's raining. I'm trying to speed up the process because I know they will dry quicker outside than, you know, outside in the wind than inside the house. So anyway, uh, probably not the best way to do it. Alright, so while I'm waiting for the other ones to dry, I already have some that are already dried because I wanted to demonstrate how beautifully they peel off. Look at this. So satisfying. And then you might have these little bits of glue that's dried. You just kind of get rid of that. And there you have it. Look how easy they come off. How satisfying is this? Check it out. Here's another thing that you can do. On this one here, I did this exact same process. But the first thing I did is I popped down a little bit of calico or muslin first onto my cereal bag and then the images and then the tea bag. And I have this material a kind of uh, embellishment. Right? So that's another thing you can play around with. So now you might be wondering, how would you use this? What do you do with this? So I thought maybe we can make a little something. First of all, I want to test my theory. And my theory is this, because this is all dried glue, right? It's been covered in glue and there's glue underneath. My theory is that if I wet the back, it becomes almost like a sticker. So I want to see if that's what happens. So I'm simply going to use my brush with some you know water on it and wet the back and let's test my theory so see how it's become flimsy again let's see maybe you don't have to wet the back maybe you can just pop it down and go over it with some water i don't know how i feel about this it feels like what's the point of doing all that and then why not just do it directly onto a book page or whatnot so i'm not i'm not sure how i actually feel about this let's do something else I suppose the point I was trying to make is that if you get this wet, it will reactivate the glue. I think I'm going to go ahead and do something with this. I'm going to go and see if I can sew on it. Here we go. So that's gone through my sewing machine quite beautifully. No issues. It is still quite thin, almost vellum kind of a feel. So I was slightly careful while I was sewing through, but it most definitely works, which means that you can sew them directly onto your projects. So I'm just going to run with this idea and I'm going to go ahead and sew this directly onto this page. I'm going to make this into a little something. Here we go, sewn it directly onto the page, made a little pocket. I'm just going to keep running with this idea. Maybe I can stick with that tea bag theme we've got going on. I'm just going to use one of these tea bags and perhaps I can sew a little ruffle there here we go going with a real vintage kind of a look not everyone's cup of tea but 
we're just playing around so now what else can i do with this ink some edges then perhaps i'm gonna grab a tea dyed piece of cardstock fold it in half i'm gonna get rid of this and get rid of this maybe i won't get rid of this actually i quite like that look so we'll leave that i'm thinking maybe i can use that to my advantage and here's a piece of cloth that's been ripped and it's looking all vintagey going with the vintage theme let's see how this is gonna look i can always chop it off if it doesn't work i can always just go back to the original plan which was to cut it off what am i trying to achieve with this i don't know do you have to have a definite plan in mind when creating probably not it's probably better not to have one but just do whatever calls to you next i guess i don't know is this gonna look good we'll see so now what do i do with this what do, what can we do with this i can maybe tie a knot but you know i'm thinking i'm gonna do whatever calls next which is maybe i can just do a little staple there or just sew through i know what i'll do chop that off i'm going to use this piece here's what we have so far so i just simply stitched that here at the end maybe i can cut that off now what to do i'm going to glue the three sides down there we go so we have a pocket and a pocket we'll come back to that so now i want to use this and it's going to be my closure and it's really I only have this short little piece left and I need two of them so simple does it all I'm going to do is sew one on here and one at the back here we go that's sewn on one at the front one at the back I don't know what are we going to do next let's make a little signature and there we go a little signature is in and let's bind it in. I'm going to use a three hole pamphlet stitch and off to the binding. There we go. So that's bound. I wasn't planning on making a, a journal it was only supposed to be a little something but you just go where the muse takes you all right i pulled out some pieces just going with the flow i sewn on this piece of paper that i had onto some of this tea dyed cardstock the thing is what i'm trying to convey over here is that you will often have or you might be not uh, creative or you might not think of yourself as creative or you might be creative but you might be stuck in a rut which is exactly where i am at the moment i'm so terribly stuck in a rut and i can't be bothered and i just uh, don't feel great and when i started filming i was thinking what am i gonna do like, what am I going to do with this? I mean, there's so many things we can do with these things. But sometimes there's just so many things we can do with them. And so what do you do with them? And when you're feeling that way, the way I'm feeling today, I'm going to use this little piece of leftover. So what I'm going to do is this. So anyway, what I wanted to say is when you're feeling that way, the best thing to do is just start creating something and just do the next thing that calls and then the next thing and the next thing, you know. And then you end up with something ho that's hopefully going to look pretty cool. And the way that I see it is that even if what you do looks completely crap and you hate it, at least you did something. You didn't just sit there and wallow in despair. At least it's something. All right, I might even pop that in there. I might pop that in there. I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe that. Bit sticking out here and there. What do we think? So I guess the idea with these things that we made is that any project you apply to, of course, you want it to be the star of the project. They can't go into little pockets and stuff like that. But because you're putting all of that effort into making them, your project probably should center around them. Your project really should do anything you want it to do. So when I say it should center around them, 
I don't really mean it like that. Like I'm not telling you what to do, you know, but that's the way that I see it with something like this. You know, if you spend all this time making the thing, cutting it out, gluing it down, waiting for it to dry, well, then at least you put all this effort into these little pieces that then they can become the star of the show, right? Anyway, that's the way that I see it. And that's why I ended up making this into a journal. So the initial idea when I first started, I thought maybe I can make a little journaling card that can go inside a journal, but it actually ended up being the front of an actual little booklet. You know, I mean, we can go to town with all of these pages inside and here and all that sort of stuff, but I'm actually feeling quite satisfied with how this looks. I'm really, really happy that I just went along with it and just did the next step and the next step and the next step. And I kept going until I'm satisfied, which is right now. I'm satisfied and there you have it. Another thing that I wanted to show you, which I didn't really demonstrate is once they're dry, you can probably see it on this one the best. I mean, some of the tea bags that I used have the, the dark spots, but some of them like this one here doesn't have any dark spots. So you can just go in and ink the edges and then you end up with this nice frame around the image it looks really vintagey and i don't know it just looks so much better oh my goodness i love this one totally satisfying look at that Oh, look at this one. And then they're actually not too bad. Not bad, not bad. This one is definitely a total win. 100%. Look at that. And of course, I love the big ones as well. This one has tea in there. So because we have that first layer of glue and then the images and then the tea bag, that tea, a loose leaf tea, is kind of stuck in between the layers of glue but it's in there and there you have it look how many I've got so much fun to make plus I have a little project unplanned little project for today that makes me really happy let me know what you guys think did you enjoy this video did you get some new ideas will you give it a go I hope you feel inspired at least thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye